my name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. After missing two launch windows in a row last episode, well, we're not going to be missing anymore. It is time to get the next module of my Drez Explorer off of the ground. So I'm just waiting here for the KSC to be underneath of my target orbit. I think that'll do it, so let's get this show on the road. Yeah, this missed uh, two launch windows last episode. Uh, one, because I was busy trying to land the Kegel 4 on the surface of the moon. And we will be revisiting the crew of the Kegel 4 in this particular episode. See if we cannot mount an expedition from the highlands, where they are right now, into the east crater. And see if we cannot scrounge up a bit more science so that will be coming up a little bit later on this episode and it missed its other launch window because I was very busy last episode performing a capture of Moho but that is now all taken care of there's nothing now to prevent us from getting this thing off the ground also what's coming up in this episode well we have uh, a little bit of a brief it'll be brief expedition to the North Polar Ice Cap. We seem to be getting some signals about, well, some sort of strange Arctic crash site. Um, there's reports of a vessel crashed up there, though. Kerbals know nothing about any any expeditions out to the Arctic, so we'll have to see what that's about. Uh, also, we will be launching our first crew of our Drez expedition, getting them up to the partially completed um, Drez Explorer, and that will be coming up a little bit later in this episode. But why don't we talk a little bit about this vessel here? Where you are? You can see, it's really it's it's built again around the uh, Mark One Laboratory Extensions mod, the Mole mod. Uh, up at the front here, yeah, this is the Comtech EXP VR2T antenna. Yeah, some new tech that certainly does look cool, though in reality it actually is just a bigger omnidirectional antenna. I uh, also have some solar panels on here. We'll start deploying these guys. These really actually are for backup power generation. The final vessel will be nuclear powered, but uh, they're certainly good to have out for now. Um, yeah, you might have mentioned or remembered a few episodes ago when I started research on that antenna, I said that it might have something, it, it has something to do with uh, helping to deal with signal delay with remote tech. That actually is wrong. I was thinking about something else. All it is is a, a uh, oh, I have some more tech here too. A magnetometer. Might as well do some science. 22.5 science. Yeah, let's transmit that. Uh, yeah, let's get back to the antenna. Um, I thought the antenna would allow this vessel to act as a command center if I crewed it with appropriate number of kerbals. Um, I turned out to be wrong. There is a remote tech part that does allow vessels to act as a command center, so you don't have to deal with the light delay all the way back to Kerbin. Um, but that part is still to be unlocked. It's actually part of a probe body, which kind of makes more sense than it being part of an antenna. So uh, I do plan on sending some unmanned landers to Drez, so I will have to deal with the signal delay landing vessels on Drez. I'll talk about that when, I, when we go to take a look at those landers, but uh, that's coming up in a future episode. In the meantime, we'll finish off our circularization here. Uh, the big booster, the main booster here, well, the only booster really, isn't it, uh, is autonomous. So it's going to stick with the vessel because the actual command module has no propulsion on it or fuel on it at all. So, uh, it's going to stick with the vessel until we have the command module docked with the habitation module, which is already in orbit. That's what we are targeting. Unfortunately, the drift burn is not going to be for another day and a half. It won't be another day and a half until we are going to be performing that rendezvous. Unfortunately, I couldn't time where 
the uh, habitation module was in its orbit. The timing had to do with where we are crossing the orbit because the orbit is inclined. Uh, so I had to go with that as opposed to, I guess I could have waited and waited until both things lined up, but that would have taken forever. So it's going to take a day and a half, almost two days actually, to get out there. So in the meantime, why don't we get ourselves back to the Kerbal Space Center? Where we have Gilly and Chrissy taking off in the Otter 3 on their way to this Arctic crash site that I mentioned. So I'm going to put out right in front here, spoilers! There will be a major spoiler coming up for those that don't like these things. So anyway, with that out of the way, we'll take a quick look here at these new textures. These are, um, you might have noticed them actually with the launch as well. These are a recent improvement in the stock visual enhancements mod as well as Scatterer. I've been playing around with Scatterer settings, trying to sort of optimize or at least make the performance tolerable. I've turned off the water shaders, so the water could look a lot better for those people that are used to uh, Scatterer, but oh well, they are what they are. Let's take a look at where we are going. So this is my high res, almost completed high res map. This is taking longer than it should because uh, I didn't look at the information connected with the high-res scanner and uh, the satellite is in too low an orbit, but uh, yeah, that's neither here nor there. We are on our way basically to the North Pole. That is where we're going. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I'll make this a pretty short uh, thing. I want to get back to what we're doing, but I do want to take some it, uh, opportunities again to take a look at these Wonderful surface textures being put in by the stock visual enhancements mod. Though, I don't know. I don't know about you looking at the auroras from inside the atmosphere. To me, they look less like aurora and more like really, really toxic smog. Anyway, we are closing in on our location here. And again, we'll pause to take a look at the wonderful textures coming at us of snow that actually looks... You know, a little bit like snow. <laughs> Imagine that. And we'll do ourselves a little bit of a flyby. Oh, what is that down there? Oh, we'll have to get in closer and take a look, won't we? Oh, and Squad, uh, fixing this sort of wheel friction issue that came with 1.1, that'd be really nice with the next update personal request please <laughs> anyway once things have settled down a little bit uh we are in the polar ice cap so we do have a little bit of science that we can collect and we'll uh we'll get chrissy out here and then whoa okay chrissy just went for a little bit of an ejection and try as i might i could not get her back up i don't know what happened here like before i used to be able to climb up to the top of this ladder and just hit climb F and she would climb up onto the wing and now there is no way around it oh well main thing we are here to do we can still do we'll head out to the crash site Ooh, our message is from Werner Werner that thing doesn't look like it came from Kerbin oh well thank you Captain Obvious <laughs> oh yes Okay, well, anyway, where did this come from? I don't know. Another little Easter egg left to us by the developers. Hopefully there aren't any carrot monsters in wait for Gilly here. Who's that exploring this? Or, you know, rubber prosthetics and animatronics, if you're more of a John Carpenter kind of fan. I'll leave that reference the way it is. <laughs> so we'll just take in the view here. Could never get these guys back into the plane so had to use the magic recovery system but with that out of the way why don't we get ourselves to the moon where my eva challenges just continue now you might recall from last episode that i came up with this idea to eva the surface science pack equipment over to the nearby east crater so i got Krisnik and stala oh wait 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 i was reminded in the comments from last episode that it's not stala it's Stala. thanks Rook, for that anyway uh the idea here is to eva over this equipment 
But as you can see right here, I got a bit of a problem. Chris Nix, full thrust on his EVA pack. He cannot get off the ground. The issue is he's too heavy with the stuff he's carrying. He's got uh, 50, there's 64 kilograms there in those eight plugs. And he's got 50 kilograms from this uh, central station. And there are actually seven more pieces of equipment, all of which that weigh 50 kilograms. Uh, so that is going to pose a bit of a challenge. So I took Chris Nick, we shedded half of those plugs to get his weight down, and then he was able to get himself off the ground. So let's uh, get rolling here. Okay, we are off. I gotta be a little careful here. He's a little sluggish. And I shouldn't have to go too far south. There is a lip right here, and then we should be dropping right into the east crater. Let's keep an eye on our EVA propellant. Because I have to be thrusting up a lot to keep him from crashing into the ground. And that's going to obviously use up propellant. Here comes the lip here. Oh my, look at that view. That's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, going through propellant pretty crazily. We're still in the highlands, according to Kerbal Engineer. So we still keep got, we got to keep heading south until, uh, until I see it go to the east crater. I'm wondering if I should have dropped a waypoint along here somewhere to give me a better idea of how far I need to go. Now, as they say, hindsight is 2020. But this seems to be. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! You're lo ah! Ow! Ow! Ouch! 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 Oh! Gosh! Oh! Please stop soon. Okay, he's slowing down. Okay, I think he's going to be okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Um, I think this may have just made the decision for me. <laughs> Remember, Chris Nick is only carrying a small fraction of the equipment we need. So doing all this, and then we're not far off from using up half of our propellant, too. Remember, he's got to get back. Oh, oh, he's okay. He's okay. Come on, get up. You can get up, Chris Nick. There we go. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, the final nail was uh, subsequent investigation with the ScanSat biomap. Showed that I was, I'm not even halfway there yet, and I've used up almost half my propellant. And I got to do several of these trips. Clearly, what would have been ideal would be a rover. Something to think about for future missions, but there is no rover to be had right now. So I just got to get Chris Nick back. Get a nice view here of the moon arch again. You know, I, I actually have a bit of a soft spot for this particular arch because this was the first Easter egg back, oh, I don't know, in the 0 .20, 0 .21 days when I first was playing Kerbal Space Program. Like the corners of my mind. Misty water color man. of the way we were. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was gone there for a moment. Oh, back to the present. Yes, Chris Nick. Uh, we got Chris Nick back into the lander. These guys still have a couple of days to go before their launch window with the Karayan 1. So uh, we're going to have to leave them for now and get ourselves back to Kerbin. It is now a little over a day later, and we're at another launch window to rendezvous with our Dres Explorer. By the way, which is called the Kermes. I should just keep calling it the Kermes rather than the Dres Explorer. And this is the Dream Chaser, my LKO crewed transport, and aboard it. 
is the crew for my Drez mission. So why don't I spend a little bit of time talking about the crew. We have our pilot Svetlana, our engineer Glafia. We have two scientists, our veteran scientist Chrissy. And then I wanted to have two scientists for the uh, laboratory module that's going to be on the vessel. And so say hello to Tomwig, who was a recent hire. So I've just hired him, hasn't been on a mission before. And now we're going to send them off for two years in space. Um, and actually, I had to um and awe a little bit about, about this crew selection. Because that was sort of the thing that you're balancing. I wanted to have experienced crew. Um, particularly in the science and engineering department. Uh, but I also wanted to have... Uh, I don't know. What, like Once you sent them off, you're not going to see them pretty much again for a year or so. You know, it's going to be a long time. You will have to do a correction burn probably at some point. And then a year later, they'll be in Dres, And then a year after that, they'll be back home. So we're not going to be seeing these folks too much after the next episode or two. And I almost put Jeb in the pilot seat. Almost. Just to sort of balance off the male-female, male-female thing that's going on with the crew. And I didn't, because I'm not set to say goodbye to Jeb, so it's Svetlana. Now one thing actually I realized uh, just before launching this is, well actually it was after I set up my last rendezvous, which I haven't even done the burn for yet, and, you and it was going to be an hour and a half before, or an hour and a half, a day and a half before the command module was going to begin its rendezvous procedure with the Kermes habitation module, and I went, oh my gosh, this vessel, fully crewed, only has life support for a day. Uh, so that's why uh, my original plan was I was going to put someone like Jeb in here as well, a pilot who wasn't going to go onto the Kermes, but then he was going to fly this vessel back home because this vessel is not coming with us to Dres. Um, but then I was worried about the life support. So I thought, let's keep it to a minimum. I'll, I'll keep just put in the people that I have to with four of the fully, it's fully capable of taking six. So with four people, there's a day and a half of life support. Um, so I'm hoping that, uh, you know, uh, uh, this gives me a bit of a better safety margin. And then we'll just cast off the Dream Chaser. I'll have to send off some sort of mission to go get it uh, once the uh, Kermes is on its way to Dres. Anyway, uh, so... Oh, well, here's what I, I ended up setting up my rendezvous with the uh, Kermes, and it is over a day and a half away. These guys don't have the life support to do that. So, change of plan. Uh, right now, we are in an 80 kilometer orbit. The Kermes is in a 100 kilometer orbit, so it is going slower than us. However, it is behind us, so we have to go all the way around the planet to catch up with it. That's why this is going to take so long. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn prograde and start raising up my apoapsis, uh, something over 150 kilometers. There, that ought to do it. And then uh, that will increase our orbital period, or in other words, slow us down. So now the Kermes will be catching up to us. So we'll just time warp out here till apoapsis, and I'm going to push my periapsis up to 100 kilometers, which is the same altitude as the Kermes, and then we'll try this again. So I'm going to set up my maneuver node uh, at periapsis now, because that's where the two orbits are very close to coming together. And uh, yeah, a little bit of pushing around of that node and I found I just had to do a bit of a tiny burn. It's only now about an hour away. That's fantastic. Um, I kind of wish I had Jeb along now. He could have easily sticked around with plenty of life support and we could have uh, brought the, brought the uh, Dream Chaser back down without uh, now having to set up another mission to go get it. So we'll just time warp to our burn here. We got a lot of vessels close together here. We got that lead ship is us, the Dreamweaver. The ship behind it is actually the command module. And the Kermes, for some reason, has been marked as a space station trailing all of that. So we're waiting for the space station, the Kermes, to catch up to us. Oh geez, we got a lot of things kind of happening all at the same time here. Let's let's just stop the time warp for just a little bit. Check this here. Oh gosh, yeah, and the Kegel 4. 
Oh my gosh, got the Kegel 4, we got the burn for the command module coming up. Let's check first of all on the Kegel 4 here. Remember, they have to rendezvous with the Karayan in orbit. So, where are they? Oh, there they are. They're on the there, and the Karayan, you can see it to the right of it. That's at least half an hour away. <laughs> they have to make this burn because they're not, I can't have them go through a lunar night. So, uh, we'll get, but we can put that on hold. We'll do the Dream Chaser burn. Alrighty. Okay, okay, let's get rid of the node here. We'll just sort of finish this off. It's a little, little bit bouncy, a little bit twitchy. A little more. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, okay, it is twitchy, but I see 600 meters in about 24 minutes. So I think this is going to work okay. So why don't we set up an alarm for this and, oh, wait, we got the command modules burn is coming up in about 18 minutes. Okay, so we'll finish off setting up this particular alarm and then uh, best jump over to the command module. Okay, so this ship's burns really in about 27 minutes. I'd set up the alarm with a 10 minute lead time. So let's delete this old alarm and we'll put in a new one. There we go. Uh, and this time we'll just give three minutes warning. So there we go. It's still, oh my gosh, I got 20 minutes for the rendezvous with the dream. Again, there's a few minutes Lee on that too, but clearly this burn and the rendezvous with the dream chaser. I keep seeing dream weaver, dream chaser. going to be pretty close together, but uh, let's get back to the dream chaser and do the rendezvous. And here you can really see just how close all these vehicles are together. I changed the uh, Kermes icon back to a ship. So I've got three ship icons all really close together to each other. I can't even tell which one's which, but uh, what we'll do, let's see if we can not reduce our encounter distance a little bit. Okay, that's reducing it, but it's also pushing it further away. Yeah, it's a little over, what, about two and a half minutes away, according to Kerbal Engineer. Let's time warp in a little bit closer. These are really, I'm going to get the, the burn for the command mod. Oh, there's the alarm for it. Okay, now remember, that's really three minutes away, so there's no immediate urgency. It would be awesome if I could actually get this docked. But I don't think that's going to happen. Let's reduce the distance a bit more yeah it would be awesome if I could have got that docked before I had to do the burn for the command module but I don't think that's going to happen and I can't miss that rendezvous burner or else who knows when the next one will be coming up so let's check here how are we doing putting on okay we're four kilometers away still a couple minutes so uh, it should be all right I, I can leave this just for a little bit it's not going to crash into it in the immediate future, I mean in the next few seconds anyways, and why don't we hop over to the command module and we'll reset that alarm. Alrighty, so uh, alarm clock, here we go, okay, uh, got a minute, no, 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 no. I, I think, I, how long does it take me to reorient the ship, let's change it, no, let's change this to 45 seconds, 45 second lead time, add alarm, Okay, uh, I got a little over a minute. <laughs> so let's get back to the Dream Chaser really fast. Uh, and worse comes to worse, I mean, I could just, you know, I'm close enough now that I could bring my velocity, my relative velocity, close to zero uh, as that alarm comes up because I don't think I'll be able to dock in just a minute. So the plan here is to get as close as I can before I have to uh, bring down my relative velocity close to zero and then hop over to the Kermes and or the Kermes, the command module and do that burn and then come back and do the docking. Should work. <laughs> this is always what happens with Kerbal construction time. Some people might be wondering as well, why am I bringing up the crew now when the vessel is not 
to completed yet. This vessel has, even once the command module is on, will have no fuel and no engines. <laughs> Still to come. The reason is, is because the propulsion module, which is going to be the last module for this vessel, is uh, quite massive. It's the biggest thing that I have launched to date. And, uh, oh wait, I'll explain this in just a little bit. Let's finish this off. Because uh, we are getting close to that alarm. It's under 10 seconds away. Okay. Let's see there. Okay, about 2.5 meters per second. Still relative velocity, I think. Uh, the last thing I want is to come back here and find out that I've gone past it. So let's bring that down a little bit more. There, we're under a meter per second. That's good. Okay. Let's jump to ship. Get rid of this. There we go. All right, okay, let's get rid of that and get on the node. We do not have a lot of time. If I should have put it on the node before I left this vessel last time, that would have been a little bit smarter, but uh, I think it's okay. It should be all right. Here we go. Let's get over to map view so that I can see the actual rendezvous and close approach indicators. Okay, let's get on there. Come on, get on it. Bit more to the right. Jeez, we only got a few seconds. Come on, let's do it. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's get rid of the node. And let's take a look at this. Uh, it's still a little over a kilometer. Let's, uh, little puffs. I have no RCS on this thing. The only engine is actually the main <laughs> mainsail. There we go. We're under a kilometer. That's good enough. Okay, so let's set the alarm. That's going to be in about 16 minutes to the rendezvous. Let's give ourselves five minutes lead time. By then I should easily be docked. All right, no problem. Close the alarm clock. Let's get back to the dream chaser. All righty, we got a little bit over 15 minutes here. Easy peasy. So we'll start off by increasing our relative velocity by burning at the HAB module. And then we'll just do our normal docking, which you've seen oh so many times before. I mentioned earlier, like some people might be wondering, why uh, am I bringing up the crew now when this vessel's not complete? And I mentioned that the propulsion module for this thing is going to be massive and in fact it's almost built and you should probably be seeing it next episode but the issue with it is is that with massive launches uh you get longer times to recondition the launch pad and this is not a very massive launch the uh this the uh dream chaser here in fact it's a very predictable launch because i've used this vessel now a few times already and i know that the Reconditioning time for the launch pad is very short after this launch, so it made sense to launch this first, where the reconditioning time is going to be very short, so that I can get up the propulsion module up more quickly and have this vessel completed quicker than I would have if I did it the other way around. But anyway, as you can see here, we are docked. Kind of a dorky vessel. Remember, the Dream Chaser will be uh, cast aside. Uh, why don't we check on? Our crew on the moon here. Hang on, where are they? They're, 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 there they are on the top of the east crater, and the orbit's gone past. Oh, wait, no, 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 the Krine's in the higher orbit. Whew, that's the uh, abandoned Kegel 2 orbit to its left. There they are, they still got time. All right, obviously, though, this is a, <laughs> a high priority item once all this docking is taken care of, but that's going to have to be for the next episode. And we'll finish off this episode by getting this command module attached. Now, it's a little different because there's no RCS on this command module at all. all the only engine it has is that mainsail engine that I have tweaked down. And I'm going to bring down my relative velocity nice and low once I'm in fairly close here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to detach that booster. Remember, the booster is autonomous. So we'll get rid of that, get it out of the way, and then deorbit it later. And then we'll fly in the combination Kermes Habitat Module Dream Chaser, which flies actually surprisingly well for such a cobbled together vehicle. And then we'll dock that on there. And then that's going to be bringing this episode to a close. 
I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.